Okay, so let's get started with our sourdough starter. This is where my sourdough is. Last time we saw it, we just mixed it and it is now starting to break down a bit. We're going to take some of this, just some of it, and we're going to be feeding it. So I'm going to take a new container and we're going to start up the scale. Last time I fed this, it was uh, 50 grams of water. So there's about 50 grams of water. I'm also going to take some flour. I'm going to weigh off about the same amount of flour. There we go. And we're going to add a little bit of our original mixture. Now this mixture has just been flour and water. There's nothing else added. There's no yeast added to it. It's starting to smell a little funky. It's starting to smell a little bit stronger. But I'm going to take some of this, just some of it, and mix it in with that new flour and water. This is going to be feeding some of our original amount with a little bit of flour and water. I'm going to mix that together thoroughly so that it gets well mixed in there. Now what am I going to do with the rest of the sour? Well, that original starter that we started is going to get thrown away. Um, I know it seems wasteful, but you know what? When you're trying to grow a brand new sour, the best thing you can do is just to Accept a small amount of waste. Do small batches. Do a small batch and you won't have to lose much. But now we're going to wait for this. We're going to take a look at this tomorrow and see if it grows at all. This leftover remainder, this is going to go in the, in the trash. I'm going to wash out the container and we'll use it again. Alright, so that's for our sourdough sort. And that has been our, just our regular maintenance. And we're going to be doing that over and over again, just like we did today. Today's recipe is for pretzels. So we're going to be visiting some in Bavaria today. And you can see on the recipe for pretzels that we have a certain amount of, uh, a small recipe on the bottom for a mixture of baking soda and water. This is a warm water with baking soda that has been baked. We took the baking soda, baked it for 10 minutes at 300 degrees, and then mixed it with the water. What that does is it raises the baking powder, baking soda's pH level from about a number 8 to about a number 10, which is a little stronger. It gives us a little bit better color on our pretzels. Because what this mixture does, being an alkali, is it's going to denature some of the protein on the surface of the pretzels. Regular baking soda would work fine mixed with water, but Normally, in the real industry, they don't use baking soda. They use sodium hydroxide, which is lye. Much stronger, about a 14 on the pH scale. So we're going to use this a little bit later once we get our dough together. First things first, this recipe calls for pat fermente. There's a recipe up on the system for pat fermente. I had some left over from Monday, so I weighed out 95 grams of pat fermente. And I've got that in my water just to help break it down and help loosen it up a little bit. I'm going to throw this in the bowl. We also have flour, little bread flour, salt, and there's a little bit of yeast at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and throw that all in there. And then we have some butter and some honey. Um, the recipe regularly calls for malt syrup, but at this stage of the game, it's hard to find malt syrup at the local supermarket, and honey is a natural sugar, just like malt syrup, so I figure that's going to do just fine in these pretzels. All right, I'm going to bring this on together as a do. And as I do, it's going to start to come together as a nice cohesive mass. Now, pretzel dough, just be warned here, the pretzel dough is dry. It's a really dry dough compared to other doughs, so it's not sticky at all. The other interesting thing about pretzel dough is it doesn't require any fermentation. 
this dough goes straight from mixing right into dividing, and then we go right into shaping. The time where it really ferments is after we've shaped them. Then we put them into the refrigerator and they rest. Real pretzel houses over in Bavaria, they will take their pretzel dough and they will make it a day in advance. And then they'll refrigerate it overnight. That allows the dough to really rest and really get uh, good flavor. So as I bring this dough together, and I get pretty much all the dry completely soaked up, I'm going to turn it out onto the table and we're going to work this dough by hand. I can feel that chunk of butter in there. So I'm going to keep working it here to get that butter fully incorporated. Turn it out onto the board. And as usual, we're going to go ahead and knead this dough, getting everything incorporated. Initially, it looks rather dry, but it will come together just fine. And it's a stiffer dough. To give you an idea, of the hydration level on this dough. Most baguette dough is about 65%, maybe 67% hydration, meaning that the water is about 67% of, of the flour weight. In this dough, pretzel dough, the water content is about 56% of flour weight, which means that there's more flour in relation to flour, in relation to water, making it much drier and the stiffer dough. So it's going to take some elbow grease to get this mixed. Just get above your work. Use your body weight to press down. That way you'll be able to get good results without wearing yourself out. Now this will probably take about 8 to 12 minutes, depending on your technique and how aggressive you are with the dough. One way that you can save yourself effort and labor is if you have the time, you can mix it with like this until it's pretty smooth, cover it to rest it for a while, come back and fold it. That will strengthen the dough and do just about as good a job as kneading the dough without having to go through all the physical effort. But I want this to be really well developed.
All right, we're ready to divide. We're going to divide this into 5.33 ounce pieces. That's typical for size for pretzels. So that's six and a half. That's 5.64. Okay, so that's about the size for a pretzel. And I'm going to cut it, I mean, as I'm cutting this dough, I'm just cutting it intentionally in the strips because it'll make shaping a lot easier. So as I cut these, we'll get these divided. Now the shaping pretzel is the next thing we're going to be taking a look at. Okay, so we yielded six pretzels out of that. I'll put the scale aside and take a look at all of these pieces here. So the way I'm going to shape a pretzel is I'm going to start by taking my dough, flattening it out, and I'm just going to kind of roll it up just like I'm making a little miniature baguette, just to kind of make sure the dough is even. Now the way I shape a pretzel I generally make a strand like this first, just to kind of get started and to get the dough kind of pre-shaped. So these are about 10 inches long. We're going to go much longer though. A traditional pretzel, and the real Bavarian way of making it, very different than American soft pretzels. They generally make the middle much thicker and they make the ends very skinny and the arms that come down to connect with the main body of the pretzel are very, very skinny. And of course we can shape them any way we like, but if you're wanting to stay with tradition, and we'll leave the middle thick. They'll generally score these too. They generally will take a razor blade and give them a little bit of a score line on the center belly, the belly of the uh, pretzel. So it opens up. Okay, so with these pre-shaped, I'm gonna go back to our first one. I've been putting these in order. Whenever I do this kind of thing, I always make sure to put them in order so I know where I started so I can then go to the one that's been resting the longest and be able to work with that. We're going to take this and roll it out. Let's do it the traditional way. Get real skinny on the ends. Okay, you don't want to go too far. Alright, so the way we make a pretzel, I generally would do it this way. I'll go with an upside down U. So it's upside down to U. Flip it over once, flip it over twice, and then bring your arms down and give them a good pinch. There's a pretzel. Set that one aside. Let's do another one. So upside down U, flip it over once, flip it over twice, and then bring your arms down and bingo, you have a pretzel. 
Now, if you want to get gutsy and you want to try something out, we can do it like people do it in pretzel shops, which is a lot faster, but it takes a little practice. In this case, you take your dough and you just spin and come down. Bingo, pretzel. So go back to the upside down U method, flip it over once, flip it over twice, and bring your arms down and attach them. Now these pretzels, after, I'm, after I shape them, they're going to go in the refrigerator. They're going to need to rest for a while. This helps them to get rested and form a skin on the outside of the pretzel. And leave them uncovered in the refrigerator. And we're going to do that so that they, that skin will not absorb too much of the water that's in our baking soda solution. So when we dip them in here, we don't want it to absorb too much water. So one last one here. And move a couple of these so I have the room to roll. When I press these arms down, I give them a good pinch. I want to make sure they stay put. So I'm going to put these, got a little pan here. I'm going to put these on a pan that's oiled with some paper so that they don't stick, they don't have any problems. We're going to set these, in, let's say, in the fridge to just rest for a while. These can also be put in the freezer, but uh, the fridge will work for now. And we'll come back once these have had a chance to cool, rest, and get a nice skin on them. Okay, so these pretzels have been sitting in the fridge for about 45 minutes or so. We're going to take them off of the paper and we're going to be dipping them in our alkali liquid, which is, as I say, it's baking soda and water. The baking soda has been pre-baked. So it was baked in the oven for a short time to help it to dry out, but also help to convert it a bit to a higher alkali. The good thing about this alkali is that it is mild, so it won't hurt your hands. Unlike if we use sodium hydroxide, which is lye, use a solution of five ounces of lye crystals to one gallon of warm water. Uh, when you do that, uh, you need to wear gloves, you need to wear, you need to wear something in the way of uh, protection for your eyes, because if you splash that stuff, it will burn. Even then, it'll burn your fingers. I've used lye and I tried it with bare hands once, and I ended up with my fingers peeling as if they'd had a bad sunburn for about the next week. So it's good to use this milder solution. But the caveat is that this milder solution will not give you the same amount of browning, you know, a beautiful color that you get from lye. Lye is the traditional way to do things, and it gives you the best results. Okay, each of these is dipped. Now we're going to sprinkle each one with a little bit of salt. You could sprinkle pretzels with almost anything you like. I like sesame seeds sometimes, but um, poppy seeds are also good. But just I've got some kosher salt here. I'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle them with a little bit of kosher salt. Now traditional pretzel salt is better than kosher salt. It's more like pellets of salt. So they're whiter and they stand out better against the background of browning on the pretzels, but 
again, another of those items that's hard to get right now is pretzel salt. I have to order it online and get it sent to me. Okay, so these are going to go off to the oven now. They've been dipped, they've been garnished, and we're going to bake them at 500 degrees for about 12 minutes or so until we get beautiful color. We're really judging these strictly by color. So we'll be back in about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so here's the pretzels as they came out of the oven, 500 degree oven for about 12 minutes. You can see they're nice and good, good color on the bottom and uh, they're still really hot. So let these cool off. Here with my 15 minute timer. So it's a, uh, a lot of fun to make these at home. Once they're cooled off enough, you just eat them the way they are. They're great warm. It's really the best time to eat pretzels. And pretzels really don't have a very good shelf life, so the best thing to do is to make them and eat them right away. Um, the salt will start to draw moisture out of them, so they'll start to get soggy after oh, several hours. And um, so they're really best when they're fresh. So anyway, make your own pretzels at home. Post pictures up on Talon. Let me see your pictures. Let other students see your pictures. And we will look at uh, the next video so we can see what we're doing tomorrow. Actually, we're making bagels tomorrow. So we'll do some uh, different different camera angle over at the stove so you'll be able to see me uh, uh, do not just shaping the bagels, but uh, boiling the bagels as well. All right, have fun with your pretzels.